And this leads me to the true focus of this talk, believe it or not. For the limited dimensional perception, and I apologize for the kind of annoying techno jargon, but it's the best I can come up with. This limited dimensional perception I speak of is not limited to these obvious examples. And the very fabric of modern society with respect to our economic, legal, and political system is no different. Not to mention the vast number of contemporary value distortions that continue to masquerade as viable, applicable, and hence normal. How many people here are Republicans? How many people here are Democrats? How many people here are independents? How many people here reject all political parties and find the political concept itself as outdated, unscientific, and detrimental to social progress? Wow. All right, let's try another one. How many people here are capitalists? How many people here are socialists? How many people here find such notions to be equally as outdated, arbitrary, and useless with respect to truly efficient economic management? Thank you. Just as people are born into a culture that supports traditional religious belief tend to conform their values and perpetuate those values without critical thought, so do almost all of us when it comes to our modern social institutions, which we think are intellectually viable and separate from the religious dogma. Let's take, for example, government and politics. Politics in Greek means of, for, or relating to citizens. It's essentially a decision-making method of social operation. And while variance does exist, the most dominant form today is that some kind of representative government where the interests of the people are said to have some expression through the representation. In the United States, for example, we are said to have a constitutional republic. This is basically a form of representative democracy which must govern within the confines of existing constitutional law, which is a fairly rigid set of preconceived declarations that apply not only to the conduct of government, but also to the people. Why not pure democracy? Well, because pure democracy is 100 white men hanging one black man. The originators of this country had a decent intuition about the dangers of crowd mentality. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, a democracy is nothing more than mob rule where 51% of people may take away the rights of the other 49%. So democracy, for it to be applicable, is really contingent upon the masses being educated about their environment so their votes have quality. And since that's very, 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 very hard to qualify, a benchmark of rights, hence the Constitution, had to be created to enable some form of regulation. I hope that makes sense, because this, this train of thought is going to carry farther. It's a benchmark. The issue of a benchmark, if you will, as I'd like to present in this exercise, doesn't just occur with democracy. It's also applicable to the monetary system or the market system of monetary economics, to be specific. Today we have what you call a free market. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It seems to feed the same value association we have regarding democracy, you know, so-called freedom of choice. The free market means that through the movement of money, power and property can be bought and sold, the only limitation being the state of your wealth, hence your purchasing power, the actions of your competitors, and the laws, of course, created to maintain order within the system. And it's the law attribute that I find the most interesting. This is the benchmark, the legislation, or the regulatory game rules, if you will, because it's just a game. This benchmark regulation is inherent in both the free market and democracy, two ideas based, again, upon the broad romantic view of free choice. This, to me, is really interesting. For these benchmarks basically imply some type of third-party external empirical reality, don't they? An empirical reality that would, that would have to inherently be absent of some form of choice and freedom for them to exist as they do. Think about that for a moment. It's a contradiction, and this contradiction can be seen as an influence coming from, in my view, the new emergent understandings 
that arise to the evolution of knowledge. New experience-driven information trying to self-correct prior beliefs through trial and error or through intuitive step-by-step -step adaptation. In other words, the very foundational premise of democracy and the free market as far as theory is intrinsically flawed, obviously. Something is missing, or many things are missing, because it can't work on its own. It requires influence of a third-party decision process. Democracy is contingent upon an informed public along with certain ever-present rights, which are essentially there because it is assumed that the public doesn't know them, but they should. Likewise, the free market requires third-party rules to maintain order, rules which often, for example, demand certain environmental safeties, pollution protocols, uh, basic efficiency protocols, you know this. I mean, we all know that the system as it stands in the free market left to its own devices uh, would use up just about everything, as I will allude to here in a little while. The system can't stand on its own. It will self-destruct. Put another way, these rules are needed to protect the free market and democracy from itself. Otherwise, again, they will self-destruct. As an extended example, if it wasn't for the regulations existing against, say, corporate monopoly, the world would have been taken over by one corporation a long, long time ago. Despite the statistically void, utterly false notions perpetuated by economists that the more free the market, the more efficient, free market competition is one of the most hegemonic concepts ever invented. While mob rule democracy, again continuing our comparison, can generate mass irrationality with no basis in reality, if not properly collared through rights and education. Sorry to drill this in, but it's very important. By the way, I suggest a book called The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind. If you want to read about how crowd mentality can override independent thought in a very caustic way, it's well documented that people lose their objectivity and lose their sense of control when involved in mass appeal. And that isn't just, say, for a soccer riot. It happens through the media. It happens through many different forms. So then, what is this benchmark that we keep seeing? What, it, what is really being referenced in the broad view? Using the example of rights for democracy and regulation for the free market, what do those two issues really reach for? It reaches for the natural order, or more operationally, scientific causality. That is what is breaching through the concrete. The most dangerous value we can have floating around the culture today, and I hope everyone can really listen carefully to this, the most dangerous value we have floating around the culture today is the idea that any of us have freedom of choice or the right to our own opinion, especially when it comes to issues of human survival and sustainability. We cannot choose, we can only align if we wish to survive and prosper, period. There is simply no such thing as freedom when the benchmark of scientific causality is brought into the equation with respect to any action or goal. The only caveat is the emergent uncertainty of the evolution of knowledge, which again does require a threshold of flexibility. Why? Because again, we don't know everything. But we do seem to get closer and closer to more empirical understandings as time moves forward. Is there really any freedom to how we organize our economy on a finite planet if the goal is to create the most efficient, sustainable means of production, distribution, and regeneration? No, there isn't. Industry is a technical process, a calculation problem, where the variables of human needs, physical science, and earthly resources are brought into a single regulatory equation, if you will. The properties of our resources can be scientifically quantified now, strategically assessed as far as their purpose, strategically oriented as far as the design in the most logical manner, distributed through the exact same logic of pure efficiency. We have globalization on this planet. What the hell are we doing? We're taking stuff from all over the world, exploiting labor, moving it around, wasting tons of energy, when we could easily develop production methods in local communities where you save x-fold amount of energy, the distance between elements moving is, is x-fold less. Uh, it's insane. But yet, the system perpetuates that. 
That's for a larger order subject that I don't have time to go into. We could strategically orient industry, and it's self-evident as we do based on the physics of our reality and where things are. We could enable an efficiency never known before. It becomes self-evident. And why would we possibly, with regard to sustainability, want to do anything less?